It does need to be. Now, what, what do you think is causing autism? And in your personal estimation, do you think that it is a, that there's a rise in the factors that are causing autism? Or do you think that it's a, a rise in the understanding of these variables that contribute to it that you could diagnose people with and that before they were previously undiagnosed? So I, I think most of it is that, that we're just diagnosing it more and we're including individuals in the autism category that we didn't before. And by the way, the numbers are about to go up even more because we're getting better at diagnosing girls and women with autism which is also quite interesting. We used to say it was 10 to 1 boys to girls, and now we know there are a lot more girls and women on the autism spectrum. It's just that they're usually more verbal and they can camouflage it mm. better. But they have very high rates of comorbidities like uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. A lot of the teenage girls with eating disorders, now they're finding, could actually be on the autism spectrum. So the numbers are about to go up again. I mean, that's just an example. I mean, is th I guess what you're really trying to get at is it, is it beyond that? Is there, so, is there an, a bona fide increase beyond the number of diagnoses? And, and that one I'm still not sure about. Yeah, I read um, an article about early onset gender dysphoria being connected to young girls right, with autism. Right, that, yeah. uh, there's a disproportionate number of girls with gender dysphoria who turn out to be also autistic. Right, I've heard that as well. Yeah. yeah that's actually – so it's really fascinating uh, yeah. to think about. Now, Unfortunate and fascinating at the same yeah, time, right? Yeah, there, there's, um, there's a nice paper by a very good environmental scientist named Phil Landrigan who used to be at Mount Sinai now. I think he's at Boston College now. And he – publishes about five or six chemicals in the environment, which if you're exposed to for long periods of time during early pregnancy, your child will be born with some features that resemble autism. Do you know what those chemicals so are? So I have to remember, I talk about them in the book. One of them is Depakote, valproic acid, which is a psychiatric medicine used as a mood stabilizer or an antidepressant. So prolonged use of Depakote during pregnancy has been linked to something that resembles autism. Is so this that, a common medication? It's a common medication, um, but now that we know this information, we don't use it anymore. And so one of the things that I've been saying to, you know, people like Bobby Kennedy and everything else, if you really want, if you really think there's some environmental link to autism, we've got a list of at least six chemicals during early exposure and pregnancy that are probably causing mutations and things like that, that are leading to autism. Why aren't we, why isn't anybody looking into that? Mm. It's just crazy. I mean, so all the focus on goes into vaccines yeah. and it kind of sucks all the oxygen out of the room so that, you know, really understanding the search for autism gets delayed or in some cases doesn't get pursued at all. Or the other thing that happens in many state legislatures and things like that, the focus is so much about vaccines that we don't talk about what autism parents really need. I mean, what do I need for Rachel? We need, you know, employment counseling and help. We need mental health counseling. What do we do after we're gone? Rachel right now is living with us. I'm, I turned 60. My wife is, you know, 58. What happens to us 10, 15, 20 years from now? There's no roadmap. Right. Just so, so all of that gets shunted aside because of these phony baloney anti-vaccine arguments. And that's why I get angry. That's when... I start to realize these guys, in addition to affecting public health, are actually hurting autism families as well. Well, that makes sense. I mean, and I can completely understand why this would upset you, especially as a scientist. Now, when you're talking about these uh, various chemicals that you think do contribute to or possibly cause autism, mm -hmm. um, maybe we should really concentrate on that and, and publish something about this. Is this something that, is there an article that people can go to that says something about this? There or? is, I, I talk about it in the book. In the I, book. I, and I could, if I opened up the book, I could provide it for you. Um, is there anything that people can read online about this without going to your book? Um, probably, you know, one of the problems that we face in this country is that we put a lot of scientific articles behind paywalls, right. which is a real source of frustration for me. And Why that's do what, they do that? Well, one of the reasons, one of the things that I've done now is um, I'm one of the, uh, I founded a, an open access journal called the Public Library of Science Neglected Tropical Diseases so that anybody with a computer, you know, an internet connection and a printer can download the articles free of charge. And we need more of that. That's great.